You know, there's this phenomenon where there's the four generations in the workforce at any one point in time, right? So, you know, now you've got, you know, the there's still some baby boomers out there who are working. There's Gen X's like me. Then there's the millennials, which are the Y's, and then the Z's, which are the new ones. Those are what, what my kids are, you know, and they're working, right? So somebody has to manage you know, my 18 year old and 16 year old, you know, and how do you do that? Right. That's, that's really the big question. And in some of the research that we've been doing in terms of the biggest challenges business leaders find today and, and that they have to deal with, one of those is the generational dynamics. And it's gotten to a point where it's, it's risen right up there with like machine learning and artificial intelligence. It's side by side in terms of how do I figure this out as a business leader? So that's what today's conversation is. Lisa is going to crack the code for us. <laughs> or at least give you some ideas as far as things you can do. That's, the, that's exactly what we want. That's exactly what we want. For you as a business leader out there, you know, go ahead and take some notes on this one because you, know, you definitely have to interact with people in the different generations. And you, know, you may have figured out that not everybody is the same. Right. So let's start with that premise. And that's actually a good thing. Would you say, Lisa, you know, do we want everyone kind of robots walking around our job places or our communities exactly the same? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And even though there are, you know, four active generations in the workplace and the programs that I do on this, I do like to start with traditionalists. I mean, I know there's very few traditionalists still left in the workforce because they were born before 1945. But when it comes to them kind of setting that foundation, because this was a generation that, you know, they had one job their entire life. They made that commitment. There was this lifetime employment that they just assumed that they would have. So they didn't expect things like, you know, being recognized or applauded or appreciated for their efforts because they were going to work to support their family. And so you had a very traditional, a very traditional upbringing as far as that goes. But then when boomers came into the workforce, it was 1946 to 1964, this was the workforce that this, you know, this was a generation that kind of looked at what the traditionalists had amassed over their career, which you can have a pretty nice career being at one company for 30, 40, 50 years. But the boomers decided that they wanted that much more quickly than the other generation. So that's when they decided to create the term workaholic. Mm. And this was a generation that they gave so much time, money. They thought it was all about FaceTime, coming into work way before their boss gets there, working way after their boss is leaving, being proud of the fact that they hadn't taken a vacation in 15 years, you know, uh, destroying their marriage in the process because boomers were so busy focusing on the things that aren't necessarily important in that career that sometimes they neglected the relationships that were. And that's really when we started seeing divorce rates starting to be 50% of all marriages ending in divorce. Mm. The, um, and then, you know, in their forties and fifties is when corporate America kind of said, you know what, uh, we don't really need you. We're going to hire people who are younger and cheaper than you. And the boomers found themselves kicked out. Well, all along, Gen X, which is 1965 to 1980, comes into the workplace. Now, I like to say that Gen X is the smallest of the generation, 75 million boomers, 40 million Gen Xers, primarily because boomers were way too busy working to actually reproduce. <laughs> but, <laughs> but as Gen Xers are observing what happened to boomers. Number one, they were the latchkey children. They were raised in single family households. Or well, actually, they were raised by Barney, but that's another thing. Yeah, that's right. The purple dinosaur. <laughs> uh, very self sufficient generation. Very uh, cynical generation because they also saw 
how the boomers gave so much of themselves to corporate America and how they were basically just eliminated. And so Gen Xers came and they said, you know, I think I want this thing called work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So when they came in, they wanted to work until five and not have that be considered a half day. Right, so right. I still remember, and you probably remember it too, that Time Magazine article with the big pink, it was like um, pink cover that called Gen X slackers and like all oh, the I do, yeah. Have, you know, all the stuff that we now call millennials. Well, boomers were calling Gen Xers that way back in the day because that's mm -hmm. what we did. I remember uh, at one point early in my career, I asked my boss, hey, do you mind if I work a half day tomorrow? And he said, sure, pick any 12 hours you want. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't joking. That's no, the that's sad right. part. <laughs> so it really, where Gen Xers had the same work ethic of wanting to do a good job, wanting to grow in their career, they also had different priorities that the boomers had to kind of wrap their head around and they, they weren't getting it. So hence the slacker term. Mm -hmm. um, millennials came in 1980 to now they're saying about 1996. Sometimes you'll see it extended to 2000. It's a little fuzzy when it comes to Gen Y, also known as millennials. But this is a generation who, remember, were raised by boomers who told them that they could do anything that they wanted to do, be anyone they wanted to be. And with the boomers, you know, remember how I told you the traditionalists didn't really care about getting recognized for doing mm -hmm. the job? Right. Well, boomers are like starved for attention because they're giving all of this effort to corporate America and the traditionalists are like, well, why should I thank you? That's what you're getting paid for. Yeah, you, you get a check, be happy about it. Yeah. So boomers did not want their millennial offspring to feel that pain of not being recognized. So now we have the, uh, you know, the trophy generation, the participation ribbon, all of that stuff that we complain about, but yet boomers are the ones that came up with that. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean in the workplace? This is a generation that has been getting feedback since they were young kids. So if you're only doing a once a year personal performance review, uh, eh, not enough. Right, right. It's constant check-ins. How are you doing? Millennials have also had access to leadership. You know, in my day, because I'm the last year of the boomers, you know, my parents would tell me where we were going on vacation. With millennials, the boomers would ask them, so where would you like to go on vacation this year? Their opinions mattered. Their opinions counted for everything. So again, if you have a leadership team where there's all kinds of levels before those millennial employees can talk to leadership, not happening. They want access. They want to be listened to. They want to be paid attention to. Um, they also are the most educated of all the generations because remember, boomers going to college was a gift. It was not expected. But because they wanted better things for their children, they took them the four-year college route instead of going to trade and technical schools, which, by the way, we have to change that conversation. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's cut out for college, and we need people in the trades. Okay. We do, yes. <laughs> so, but changing that conversation. So these millennials are coming into the workforce with tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt with no end in sight of seeing how they're going to pay that off. So when they come to you and they're interviewing and they want 50 bucks an hour to start, you know, it's not that they think that they actually deserve it. They're just trying to figure out how am I going to pay off these student yeah, loans? Yeah, it's about making ends meet. Yeah. yeah.